our farmhouse almost exclusively with wood and we've been doing that for years. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how we do it, where we get our wood, and hopefully give you some ideas if you wanna add a wood stove to your home as well. I grew up with a wood stove and I love being able to go stand by a fire or sit near a fire and there's just something about that radiating heat source. And so when we bought our homestead about 10 years ago and the little house just had a furnace and not a stove, I was really disappointed. And it wasn't for about another five years or so that we were able to finally save up our money and buy a wood stove. Now the tricky part then was our room was extremely small and awkward and so we literally had to cram the stove into the corner but it was worth it because we had our wood heat and it was much more efficient and cost effective than heating with our furnace in our drafty old house. And then when we added on to our farmhouse in 2015, we knew we still wanted wood heat to be our primary heating source. And so we actually moved the wood stove from the old living room into the new living room, and we've been using it ever since. So our primary reason for investing in a wood stove, because it was an investment, I think our model was about $5,000 when we purchased it. It might be a little different now. But we compared that to the cost of what we were paying for propane, and we knew it would save us money in the long run. We also knew it would heat better than our little furnace because with our drafty old farmhouse, you know, the wind would blow and I could kind of see the curtains move and it just didn't do a very good job. So it, for us, it was a matter of saving money and staying warm. Um, I also was always stressed out that if the power went out, especially where we live, we're pretty far from civilization. And so power companies aren't gonna be like high priority out here to fix the power if something really big happens. And I knew if that did occur, we would freeze very quickly um, because the furnace wouldn't work without electricity. So I really wanted the peace of mind of knowing no matter what happened, we could heat ourselves and heat our house. This is my favorite wood stove accessory in the whole wide world. It's a little non-electric fan and we found it on Amazon. I'll drop a link for it in the notes below, but it doesn't use any electricity. It just runs off the heat of the stove and it just helps divert the warm air from hiding in the back and pushing it out into the room. So it is sweet. So we ended up going with a Blaze King stove and we looked around locally and shopped and talked to a lot of people. Uh, we liked the princess model, there's a lot of different models. And the biggest factor for us when we were shopping for a stove was its efficiency. Because there's a big difference in like a cute decorative stove or a hearth that just brings a nice ambiance or a feel to a room and like a workhorse wood stove that's gonna heat your house for reals. And we really needed the latter. And so, you know, maybe this Princess Blaze King model isn't my the favorite uh, as far as aesthetics of all the stoves we looked at, but it was rated high for efficiency and being able to burn all day long without being constantly restocked. And that's a big deal for us because even though we are home most of the day with our home businesses and homeschooling, uh, I don't want to be adding a log to the fire every two hours. Like it's just not high on my priority list. So what we love about this stove is if we pack it full in the morning, it will last all day, depending on how we set it. I'll show you that in a minute. And then if we pack it at night before we go to bed, it pretty much will last through the night. And Having to fill it twice a day feels very reasonable to me. It doesn't feel overwhelming and it really does work if we are gone uh, at an event in town or you know we're out for the day, it still keeps the house warm. Now we did go with a stove with a catalytic converter and I know there's a lot of controversy on this. Um, it's actually a really heated topic, no pun intended, but um, for us, the catalytic converter made sense because we liked that it was a little more environmentally friendly and by the stove burning the smoke, we figured that might help increase efficiency. So I've heard people say they hate catalytic converters and stoves and they don't work and they break. And we've been using ours for five years now and have had zero problems with the catalytic converter. So I mean, it's a choice you have to make, but for us, it's been a really good one. So this model of stove has a lever on the side and when we first build the fire, we leave it open and that just allows the smoke to go up the chimney. And then once it reaches a certain point on our little gauge here, we flip down the lever. I really need to clean this thing, it's kind of gross. But we flip this down and that diverts the smoke into the catalytic converter. And if anyone has more in-depth questions on how that works, I'm gonna have to get Christian on board because that is as deep as my explanation can go. And I love this little thing over here. It controls the amount of air that's getting into the stove and so obviously you know 
the more you open it up, the more air gets in and the hotter it goes. So most of the time, you know, when I'm starting the stove first thing in the morning or it's, it's not lit yet, I put it all the way on the three. I hope you can see that. It's kind of a bad angle. All the way to three. And then once the stove gets going, we go ahead and turn it down to two and run it on two or one and three quarters for most of the day. And that keeps the house plenty warm. Wood is another big topic. So as you know, we live out here on the Wyoming Prairie. We do not live in a forest. In fact, we're far from a forest. So it's not like a place where there's trees everywhere and people are trying to get rid of old firewood, right? It's kind of a big deal to get firewood. So we've tried a number of different things over the years. Um, the one that works best for us and is the most cost effective is to pay someone with a semi to bring us a load of logs. It is a little overwhelming when you dump the logs in the yard and you're left with literal ginormous logs that you have to deal with. Um, but Christian and I actually kind of enjoy the process. It's one of those things where it's not necessarily the easiest option out there. It'd be much easier to flip a switch on the wall, but we like the manual labor. We like the idea of hard, but good. And so the process of cutting the firewood and processing the firewood is not one that we really dislike. We've also had access to a sawmill, just a little one, for a couple of years. And so Christian's been sawing boards for windbreaks and projects. And so he's had a lot of leftover slab wood that he has used to cut into firewood. So we've split them by hand over the years, but more recently, Christian built a homemade hydraulic log splitter that is tractor powered. And uh, maybe we'll do a video at some point on how he built that. It's really beyond my brain and today's video. If you'd like to see that, leave a comment below. But that works really well and just makes the process a little smoother. And the bonus is the kids can help him run it. If you don't have the ability to have a semi truck dump logs in your yard like us, and you live in a place where you don't have trees falling down in your backyard that you can harvest, I would just shop around and see who is selling firewood locally. I think that's a really good option. I know growing up with our wood stove, even though we lived in a wooded area, my parents would still just find different guys who would go out in the woods and harvest the firewood, and they'd bring it to us for a decent price. So that's probably an option that you guys could consider as well. So Christian built the surround. Um, and so what we ended up doing is we made a base out of wood, as you can see. And then we use these really, really thick uh, landscape pavers on top and then grouted them in. And these were kind of a bear to cut, but we wanted something that looked rough and rugged. Um, I didn't want it to look smooth like tile. That's just my preference. So we did that on the bottom. And then on the back, we used this steel. It's called weathering steel. And we actually put this all along the outside of our house as Wayne's coating and we had some leftover pieces. And so we decided to use that for the surround. Now, when it's outside, it's designed to rust. And I kind of wish this was rusty, um, but because it's inside, it stayed shiny. And we just made a little rough cut wood frame to go around it, and it's worked really well. So people always ask me if the materials that we use to build our surround are fireproof or safe or rated for heat or whatever. And I can assure you that they are. We really spend a lot of time researching the materials and the safety specs on our stove before we built it. And the cool thing about this stove is we bought the heat shields for the back. So technically you could just have sheetrock behind the stove and that would still be safe and up to code and you'd be all good. We just wanted to add the steel for a little bit more of a rustic effect, but it wasn't necessary or required. So another question I get is, does it actually heat your whole house? And it does a pretty darn good job. So our house has grown over the years when we added on. It used to be really small and we added on a bunch more space. So we have about 2000 square feet in our upper floor and that is our main source of heat for the upstairs. And it does a amazingly good job. Even though we do have high ceilings, that stove keeps it cranking. Um, there are a couple exceptions as far as rooms go. The one kid's room is way towards the back of the house, kind of in the old part of the house. And if the door is shut and it's really, really cold outside on a winter day, um, it'll get chilly back there, but not to the point where they can't sleep. And then the other exception is we have a tiny little upstairs kind of an attic and it does get chilly up there on the coldest days of the year. We have a basement as well, but we really don't heat it. We're not down there all the time. Um, so it's just not something that we find necessary to keep heated all the time. But other than that, the stove does an amazing job. And as long as we keep it full of wood, uh, it, it really keeps the house extremely comfortable. And I love being able to go stand next to it. Now, when we bought the house, like I said, it had a furnace. 
And when we added on to the house, we went ahead and put another furnace in just as a backup heat source. And the reason for that being twofold, when we go on vacation, we want to be able to set the thermostat like on 65 degrees and know that the pipes won't freeze. That's kind of a big deal. And then the second reason is that if we ever sell the house, we know that probably your average consumer might not want a house that can only be heated with wood. So we didn't want to hurt our resale value by only having the wood stove option. But that being said, we don't turn the furnace on, on like hardly ever. Pretty much the only time we do it is when we leave uh, on vacation during the winter, which doesn't happen every year. So we use a very, very minimal amount of propane, which is awesome for the budget. And that's pretty much the extent of it. So wood heat might not be for everybody, but it sure works well for us and we really enjoy it and find it worth the effort. If you have questions about putting in a wood stove of your own or you have any other curiosities about how it all works, feel free to leave me a comment below and let's chat.